What up, what up? One Bush here. And today I want to show you how you can add more detail to your scenes using Vertex Blending and Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is actually my latest NFT drop that I'm working on with Mixmaster Mike. And I wanted to add a lot of detail into the scene. So if I zoom around here a little bit, you can see that I have some corrosion going on with the floor leading up to like some of these rocks and stuff. I have some puddles down in here and I just have like a lot of reflections and there's just a lot of detail in here in the scene. So you can see right here, I have some nice blending going on between the rocks and the ground that's kind of cracked up there. So the story of this scene is basically I wanted to make this underground facility look like it's kind of decrepit, like an old museum or something like that. So there's just a lot of different details in here. Like this would have been like a pristine floor. I wanted to add some grunge and stuff in here. And then I added some mega scan rocks and stuff in there just to blend it a little bit more. But that's the premise of this. So I'm going to show you exactly how I built my scene out here using vertex blending. So I have Cinema 4D version R23 open, and I'm just going to show a simple example of how we could get everything set up. And then if you guys want to take it to the next level, you're welcome to do so. So I'm going to start here with a cube and I'm just going to make this maybe like five by a thousand on the X and on the Z another thousand. And then on the X segments, I make it a thousand. And then on the Z segments, I'm going to make it a thousand as well. And if I come up here to display and come down to shading lines, we can see all the different vertices that we have in here. And I might be going a little bit too far. So maybe I'll knock this down to like 500 by 500, somewhere around there. So we still have a lot of vertices in there because if we want to do displacement maps inside of Unreal Engine, you want to make sure that you have a lot of vertices in there for it to work with. And so I think this is going to be good for this example. So I'm going to click on my cube hit C on my keyboard to make it editable. And then from here, I'm actually going to come over and down here on my timeline, let me just make it zero. So it's only one frame. Then I'm going to come up to file, come down to export, and I'm going to export this out as an FBX. Now, the reason I'm exporting this out as an FBX is because for Vertex Blending to work, it has to be an FBX file. We can't use the Datasmith plugin to bring over our objects or else it won't work. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you are using Cinema 4D and you're using the Datasmith plugin and you want to bring stuff into Unreal, the stuff that you want to do Vertex Blending on, make sure you save that out separately as an FBX file. So I'm going to come over to my settings here. And this is basically just everything I'm going to leave on. Again, it's just a real simple example. So I'm going to click OK here. And then I already have a folder called 3D. So I'm just going to name this one Tutorial. And then I'm going to click on Save. And there we go. So now we have an FBX file. So I can actually close out Cinema 4D. And now I'm back in Unreal Engine. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm actually going to delete this floor, delete this controller, and I'm going to delete Atmospheric Fog and the Sky Sphere. Just basically leaving these three things here. Then I'm gonna come over here into my content browser where we see this big green button where it says add an import. I'm gonna left click and then come up here to import asset. I'm gonna click import to. And then I'm just gonna find where I saved out that FBX. So my 3D folder tutorial. I'm gonna click on this. Just open it up in here. And then I'm just gonna leave everything at default for the FBX import options. I'm just gonna click import all. And while I'm waiting for this to import, I'm actually going to open up Megascans Bridge. So I have Bridge open now, and I'm going to actually come down to some stuff that I already downloaded. So I'm going to come over to Local, and then come down to Surfaces, because I have some that I was already working with earlier. Like, I could use this Marble Towel. It's not the one that I used for my example earlier, but I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to do it at 4K resolution. I already have it downloaded. So it's just as easy as making sure I click on the gear, go to export settings. I want to make sure my export target is Unreal Engine, which I already have set up for version 4.26. And then I'm just going to click export here. Then it says export successful. So I'm going to go back to Unreal Engine, make sure everything imported here. And there we go. So now I have a mega scans folder surfaces, and then it has that marble tile here. Then if I come back to my top browser here under content, I have my file here, so I'm just going to click and drag it in here. This is the FBX that I have. And if I come over here on my right hand side under details, under location, I'm going to hit this little yellow arrow here just to make sure everything is centered up. And then right here, it says lights need rebuilt. So I'm going to come over to my light source and just actually make it movable because we're going to be using all dynamic lighting for this example. 
and that's basically everything that we need there so i'm going to need to import a couple of more surfaces here like i'm going to maybe use this one here where it says warm brick facade i'm going to just export this out at 4k as well and then let me scroll down here and basically i'm just looking for materials that i want to be able to paint on top of that marble tile that i have there and so you could do up to three materials for this to work and so let's say let's just do something random like this mine wall here it has a lot of crevices and stuff in there that's pretty cool so i'm going to export this out as well it looks like that's successful so i have the three materials that i want to use i'm just going to exit out of bridge come down here to mega scans surfaces and now i have my three folders for my three materials so from here right here where it says search i'm actually going to hit inst starting to type out instance but i can stop at inst because that brings up all the instances here that we downloaded from mega scans and now this part is really important and so it goes in the order of operation that you select these on so if i just left click on my one material there and then hold down shift and drag over it's basically just going to do it in the order that we see it here inside of our content browser so if i click on this right here left click and let's say like i want this to be my second material that i paint with and this is my third so i'm actually going to hold down the control key so i can select that one second and then i can select this one third if you just hold down the shift key it would basically be one two three but the order that i did it in is one two three so that's just something to keep in mind that that's going to be your order of operation is the order that you select them in so from here i want to come up to mega scans i'm going to click this big green button that we have here and then i'm going to come up with this menu in which if you want to do displacement which i recommend you want to make sure that you click this on before anything else so enable displacement is clicked on and then down here i'm just going to leave it as blend material for my material name and then for my destination i'm just going to leave it at default you'll see why i'm going to click create blend material and it should be made so now i can just click this off then I'm going to click the X inside of my search bar here. Then if I come to the top menu on my content browser, you see that we now have a new folder here. And this is why I didn't change it because it just puts it in the top there. So it's called blend materials. Double click that. And now I have my blend material in here. So I'm just going to click and drag it onto my surface here. And you can see that our base one with the marble tile, which we selected first, is the one that shows up here. So if I double click on this blend material, it's actually going to open up this instance window in which we can start manipulating everything. So right here, I'm actually going to start turning these on. So I'm going to turn on the base layer, which is this marble one, the middle layer, which is the second material that we selected. I'm going to turn on the top layer, which would be the third one. And then I want to click on use individual displacement values. And actually, I'll, I'll save these two for later so that you can actually see what's going to happen with those. And so from here, I'm just going to actually scroll down. And I'm going to come down here. So for my base layer, which is this one here, I'm actually going to turn this on just so I can tile it a little bit. So if I make this a little bit smaller so we can see it in our viewport happening, I'm going to go on X tile and Y tile. I'm just going to make this five by five. There you go. Something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my middle layer, which is this one here. So I'm going to come down, change out the tiling here. Let's say five by five. And there we go so the next step from here is i want to come up to modes here at the top come down to mesh paint click on this and then right here where you see it says paint click on this and this is basically all we need to do to start painting and so if i come over here you can see right here under color painting and so if i select this right here and just have the red and the way to be able to paint is you want to have this one be black so if i click on this just to swap it you want to make sure that's black and the race is white right there and so it's as easy as just coming in and starting to paint but as you can see it's not really blending that well and the reason that we have like a ton of green hair is because we selected a lot of vertices i could probably have selected less but let me actually make my size a little bit bigger and my strength a little bit lower so you can see that we can actually paint a little bit more now and that's basically how we paint on there but if you want to blend it a little bit better you just have to come back over to your blend material scroll up here to the top and then right here where it says blend controls we can actually control it a little bit in here so if i click this on you can see that i'm missing with the contrast which is i wish i had a bigger monitor here so you guys can see a little bit better but 
if I scroll on the contrast, you can see that it's starting to blend it a little bit better in there. And then the blend amount, not really sure what that does. It doesn't really seem to do much. And then I'm just gonna zero that one out. And then for the fall off, you can see what that's doing there. So you have some really cool blend controls that we have in here to kind of work with these and make these blend a little bit better. And then if I wanted to add displacement to here, basically I just scroll up. Let me scroll this out a little bit so we can see it better. And right here under global where it says use individual displacement values i'm just going to activate these on and then it's all the way down here at the bottom under 06 it will say displacement and so this one would be our middle layer that we want to do displacement to and so what i want to do is the middle layer displacement amount i'm going to activate this on and then you can see now it's actually adding some displacement which you don't need to do too much so maybe something around there is pretty cool or if you want to go negative so it kind of does like an indent if you go too far you see it's going to you know act a little bit weird there so you just want to take it down just a little bit there somewhere around there could be cool and then just for fun maybe let's just start painting on our other one here so you can see that now we're starting to paint on that other layer that we have there and it's like it's a little bit big there so i want to come all the way up to the top here and kind of look for the one that would say top layer so right here under 04 top layer you want to scroll down here the way it says top layer offset and i'm just going to make this five by five as well and so there you go now we have a little bit more better tiling in here and this is basically just all you have to do to start painting these in same thing you could do the blending for the top layer as well so this is where double monitors would really come in handy as well. So if I come over here to blend materials, click on this top layer, maybe just blend, you know, scroll this down a little bit. There you go. So we can add some blending in here, add some better fall off, etc. So the other cool thing too is if I click on this green right here and click on blue, this is actually gonna paint on some puddles for us, which is really cool if you wanna do outdoor scenes or if you wanna add a little bit of you know, moisture to your scene and stuff like that, this is really cool. So I have it, it's always gonna be under blue, but in the side of our blend material, you need to activate it. So right here, use puddle layer. And then if I scroll down, we should have some attributes for the puddle layer, which is this one right here, 05. So you can change the opacity, the max height, the roughness, etc., etc. You have a lot of controls down here, which I would suggest just playing around with for yourself. But let me just paint this in here a little bit. Now you can see we're starting to paint some puddles in here, which is really cool. It gives us that nice little gloss in there and everything. Then if I want to play with the height a little bit, there you go. So you can see that it's playing with the puddle height there. Let me see if I want to change the roughness a little bit. So you go up a little bit, go down. You can see the gloss around that area there. So this is a really powerful tool here. And this is basically how I did my scene there that I showed there at the beginning. You could change the liquid color. You could mess with the normals if you want here. So it's really powerful. And I would suggest, you know, using this to make up your scene. Again, this only works with FBX. So if you're a Cinema 4D user like myself, we can't use the DataSmith plugin. I tried it, it doesn't work. You have to export it out as an FBX and bring that individual object into your scene. And that way you can vertex paint away. So hopefully this helped you guys out. This was a really fun tool that I kind of forced myself to learn. It's really easy to set up with mega scans as you can see. So if you do have some materials that you bought from somewhere else, you can actually import those into mega scans bridge which i do have a tutorial on how to do and then you should be able to use the same method with those materials inside of here as well so if this did help you out make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new leave me a big thumbs up leave me a comment down below and show me some of the stuff that you're creating with vertex blending and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video i'll see you soon take care thank you guys again what up what up Wimbush here Bye.